Hi, in this video we'll mainly talk about one question I call it the classic trick question about the orbital energy equation So make, make, make sure you think through it Okay, uh, but as an appetizer we also do the question of 10.9 It doesn't really matter and related to the energy that we talked about in the previous video but yeah, it's an appetizer So uh, this classic trick question is going to be our main course and also we have the dessert Okay, the dessert will be 10.12 So we'll be covering these three questions So you may want to do these three or uh, the first one and then we'll go through it one by one so pause the video now. Two thousand years later. Okay, so the first question is saying there is a satellite and the Earth. So let's draw the diagram Earth, and this is a satellite, and it is five hundred km above the Earth's surface. So this is five hundred km. Um, so pay attention that it is from the surface. So that means you also have to account for the radius of the Earth here later on. And uh, it said it just grazes the surface of the Earth. It, uh, it doesn't really matter like for this one. It just basically means I barely move through the surface. Because 500 km is not really long in terms of the space itself. So that's why it said that. Uh, you just have to calculate the speed so uh, just recall what you learned in chapter 6 and you'll be able to do it so I'll recommend you start with the F equals to MA again for circular motion so uh, the gravitational force will be the one that is being the centripetal force so G big M small m over R squared but then here for the R squared you have you got to be careful uh, maybe I will put it as yeah, small r and then here, just to not not to confuse ourselves, I'll, I'll put this as r. So the r is of course referring to the radius of the earth plus the 500 km. And then um, we'll have a small m here and then a will be using v square over r because we want to find the speed. Okay, and so we can cancel out the r and we cancel out the small m which is the satellite mass. And then we can find V equals to root G big M over R. Okay, so we know uh, the G from data booklet. We actually don't know mass of the Earth. I don't think it's provided in the data booklet. So we have to search it on Google. And for R is these two add together. So according to Google, uh, mass of the Earth will be 5.97. 10 to the power of 24 and so we can substitute all the numbers in for 500 km it will be 500 times 10 to the power of 3 in fact my scale is terrible <laughs> because this is supposed to be way way bigger than this distance because if you look at this is 10 to the power of 6 this is 10 to the power of 3 so yeah it's, it's very terrible scale so we should find the answer of 7000 something 7607 and so the unit should be in meter per second because these are all SI units. Oh, and since the raw data are in 3 sec fig, then we should express it in 3 sec fig. So 7.61 times 10 to the power of 3 meter per second to be the final answer. Finally, our main course. In order to understand the concept fully, I will show you the wrong logic once again. So uh, let's just pretend we don't see the answer from the question part A and B because basically they tell you the result already and asking you the explanation but let's say we don't know about that and we only know the satellite experience the small frictional force and uh, what will happen to the velocity and the orbit itself hello it's me again okay Mr. Wong we have learned that the satellite has velocity so it must have certain ke and it said it experienced a small frictional force and according to what we learn in mechanics then friction will give you work done against friction which will take away from the ke and it will have less ke and that means less velocity right because that is just coincide with what we learn when you have friction then things will slow down 
And so in this case, we can also think about um, the movement of the satellite itself uh, by using the idea of maybe an object that is swinging through a string, uh, performing a circular motion. So if the force is going to maintain the same, the tension is maintaining the same, but the velocity go down according to what we experience in the laboratory or experiment, then obviously uh, the object will get closer, right? Because there is not enough speed to maintain the motion, so we can make it uh, smaller. So yeah, I think that's why uh, the first part would explain saying the orbit move closer to the surface. Isn't it very simple, Mr. Wong? It's a trap. No, you fail me. Let's just recall what I said earlier in the previous video. For now, I think one thing you should learn, other than just deriving it, one thing you should learn is, no matter where the orbiting object is, no matter what orbital altitude, that means what R you have, the relationship of kinetic potential and total energy will have a ratio of this, once again, 1 over 2, negative 1, and negative 1 over 2. The ratio is always maintained the same. So let me just write all three equations out again. We have the kinetic energy to be g big M small m over 2R, potential energy negative g m m over R. Once again, you have to remember all these three. The total energy is going to be negative g big M small m over 2R. So it's important to understand that when you have friction, it's not necessarily take the energy away from the Ke. You can also take it away from the GPD as well. So the better way of dealing this idea, since we don't know which one it will take, uh, the better way to do it is think about the total energy simply. Because for total energy, then it must be smaller after the friction. So uh, what happened is, you can draw an arrow like this, right, to show that this will decrease. And so since this total energy has to be decreased, that means the whole thing will become more negative because uh, you can see there's a negative sign here, right? And if you say a negative value decrease, then that means it become more negative, okay? So that means if you try to just look at these numbers, it will become bigger. Okay, it will be a greater number. So since we cannot change G, we cannot change the mass of no matter uh, planet or the satellite itself, the only thing that we can change is to change the radius out. And so in this case, since the whole number increase, that means the radius has to be decreased in this case. So that is why we have the orbit to be closer to the Earth surface. So this is how you could explain for part A. So now it's done. You can use your own expression to talk about it. But the most important thing is you have to use this equation. And for part B, then it is simple because now we have confirmed it's going to be closer to the Earth uh, when you're orbiting. Then uh, we can look at the kinetic energy equation where uh, R, since we know is decreased already. And so the whole Ke I mean the whole number here will be bigger and therefore kinetic energy will be greater and therefore the velocity will be bigger as well because primarily um, kinetic energy will equal to half mv squared so yeah of course v will increase so this is how you can say about the velocity of the satellite okay wait 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 mr y i still don't understand can you give me an example more concrete idea Okay, fine, let me give you some numbers, how about that? So let's say this is the Earth, and now we have an orbit, the original orbit, and say this is a satellite, and let's just make up some number. So let's say GMM over R equals to 100, or right? it's just a unit, arbitrary unit. So in this case, if this is true, then that means kinetic energy will have 50, again whatever unit it is because it's 100 divided by 2 and for potential energy at this point we will have negative 100 okay and then for total energy we will have negative 
50 and obviously uh, if you just double check the like mathematically uh, we will have yes positive 50 and negative 100 will give a total of negative 50 so uh, mathematically it still makes sense and so now what you can think about it is uh, if we take away the energy from the total energy so uh, like we said uh, we want this let's say uh, we change this to negative 25 uh, wait this is increasing no sorry uh, become more negative so let's say negative 100 okay so um, obviously the GMM overall would now be different because uh, it has to be 200 in order to get the total energy to be negative 100 if you just plug into back into this equation and so in this case we will maintain again maintain the ratio of kinetic energy potential energy and total energy and so for potential energy uh, we will now have 200 negative okay and for kinetic energy we will have according to this then we'll have positive 100 so if you again check the mathematical like just add them adding them together positive 100 from ke negative 200 from gpe we have a total of negative 100 joule and if you can accept that then you can now look at the number so ke was 50 units and now it's becoming 100 units so obviously it become greater in value and therefore the velocity will increase while for the potential energy it was negative 100 and now it's negative 200 so uh, according to what you learn also uh, it means getting closer to the earth when it become more negative and so basically what happened is the satellite when it slow down it will change its orbit all right until it reach a certain orbit that is uh, fit with the velocity that uh, it can maintain its own motion so uh, the velocity will increase uh, because of the KD increase uh, while the GPD would decrease because it's getting closer to the F. Yes, I know it's kind of intuitive to know when you have friction but the satellite move faster. True story. So here come our dessert, the last question. So if you haven't tried it yet, pause the video and try it yourself. So the easiest way to handle this question is recall what I taught you earlier. Treat this graph as in a mountain. So if you want to launch a ball to the other side, you have to overcome its highest point. So highest point is here. So that means the ball has to overcome those energy and get through up to this point. And then no matter what happened, uh, just a slightly tiny velocity will help it to go down to the other side which is the moon in our case so what we have to do is just to look at the initial potential energy and then the highest energy that we can get so I have to zoom in to see better I think so here I would say is negative 3.6 um, let's not forget there is a order of magnitude and then here for the highest point is going to be negative 4 I mean 0 0.4 okay and so uh, if you try to calculate the difference I mean you can tell it's 3.2 times 10 to the power of 8 but then this is just the potential only gravitational potential only that means uh, you haven't multiplied the mass one hint in, in case you don't remember you can see the unit is per kg so obviously uh, then for the energy uh, that you need actually I just write e then uh, will be this one multiplied with the mass did they provide us the mass okay yeah here 850 so just use your calculator you will find something like 2.72 times 10 to the power of 11 joule and that will be the final answer simply that's all for this video in this video you should have learned the tricky relationship between the kinetic energy potential energy and total energy when the object is orbiting i hope you enjoy learning with me if you do so please hit the like button now and subscribe to my channel i'll see you again in the next video bye